c3 on move 3. Knight c3 used to be my main line weapon against the French. In recent times, I've been playing knight d2, the Terash, or even the King's Indian attack. Okay, this is a super solid setup for black. Let's play knight f3. And I will take and likely go for the pin after that bishop g5. This bishop typically belongs on d3 in these setups. You can play this flexibly where you try to postpone castling, maybe even think about castling queenside. So, okay, and c5 for black. Black strikes back at my center. I had this nice pawn on d4, so black looking to strike at it with a wing pawn. Now, I'm thinking if I can play some sort of move order to profit from bishop b5 check somewhere, either immediately or perhaps with bishop takes f6 inserted, because then queen takes f6, bishop b5 already looks a little awkward. I'm just thinking right now if I want to play this first. The other thing is if I play it first and then take, black has queen a5 check, so I think I'm going to play this. And I bet, especially in view of how long I took to make that move, that black may play g takes f6 here. Hope you guys are all doing well. Okay, black does take with the queen. Yeah, so now I have that check. There's also the capture on c5, but I think it's definitely stronger to check. Because on bishop d7, we're taking, and that king is getting exposed. d takes c5 check, or even knight e5. Okay, so black is going to allow that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything to really think about here. Take. Now I'll consider my next move a little bit more closely. Taking with check is, is by far the most obvious move here. But black may play king c7, and perhaps that king is getting away somehow. Still, though, I could just castle. Black might even regain the pawn, but I feel like their king is going to be permanently compromised. But I am spending a moment here just considering other options. Knight e5, I'm not sure that's hugely different black sidesteps if anything d4 is a bit less stable there queen e2 comes to mind looking for queen b5 ideas yeah i could maybe do that and try to castle queen side hmm yeah that would be an interesting way to play it not my first instinct but I'm just not completely satisfied with this. I feel like I'm going to have to lose some time cuz black is hitting b2, you know, bishop takes c5 also is coming. So I think this is not a bad moment just to think a little bit more. Yeah, I think I'm going to go queen e2 with an eye towards castle and queenside. Not too worried about losing the d-pawn. I mean, if I really wanted to, after c takes d4, I could even play knight takes d4 because queen takes d4 runs into rook d1. But there's just so many good moves. Castles, queen b5 check is probably also good. So... I want to give black chances to go wrong here in this sharp position where black's king is definitely going to be compromised. And I feel like playing a check there, I've talked about this concept before, but it kind of pushes black's king in the direction it wants to go anyways. Maybe black will play king c7 here without uh, any prompting, but that's a tougher decision than if I were to virtually force black to do that by taking or playing knight e5 check. So it's a good concept to think about. Give your opponent a wide number of moves to consider, and therefore more chances to go wrong. If you think about a, a completely forced position, a position where your opponent only has one legal move, they will play that position just as well as a grandmaster does, because they have no choice. Okay, and black does take, which I think is exceedingly dangerous. So I'm looking at castles here, I'm looking at that knight takes d4 move, I'm looking at queen b5 check, I'm looking at knight e5 again, knight e5 king here, maybe queen here. That looks like it almost wins. But I, I like the idea of castling in particular because it's going to get the rook involved on d1. Yeah, queen b5 check, king c7. Also probably decent. I mean, castles, maybe black can play rook c8 and try to sneak away. That's my only potential misgiving about that. Uh, knight e5 too. I mean, I don't see a whole lot wrong with knight e5. That looks like a just a pretty strong move. Knight e5, and then if king c7, queen c4, I think black would have to play king d6 to keep the game going there, but that's got to be bad. Yeah, I think I'm going to play knight e5 check. Put the onus back on black here. Okay, so with bishop takes f6 on move 9, I was definitely looking to seize the initiative and see if I could throw that bishop b5 check move in. So I think black should have paused a bit more there and consider their options because 
Queen takes did leave them open there to uh, the bishop b5 check. Whereas g takes, I think white would be better there. I have some nice options in that position that we'll look at, but uh, would have kept the black afloat. But here, black's just fighting for survival. Yeah, because a lot of these queen moves have, have downsides. You know, maybe king d6 in this position is just the best move. Yeah, and I was thinking about possibly f4 there, and then queen takes f4, knight check, followed by rook f1 is one way to play it. That looks potentially good. Yeah, king d6 probably is the better try. I was looking at king c7, uh, queen c4 check, then king d6, but okay, we'll look at king d6 in the postmortem for sure. So here, probably just castles queenside. Go ahead and try to get that rook involved. I could play just rook d1 as well, but I like the idea of castling in particular because now there's no bishop b4 check to worry about. Yeah, rook's bearing down on d4. Black does have queen f4 check. And I'll likely just sidestep there. I don't want to trade queens with black's king in the center. So just sidestep and see what materializes. Uh, queen b5 was another strong consideration, by the way, but black could reply with queen e7, so I think I just like getting this, this rook involved first and seeing what happens. Hmm. Although this way, bishop c7, uh, bishop c5, rather, guarding d4 is possible, so maybe queen b5 was just better there. Okay, my opponent plays bishop d6. Okay, so if I take here, my knight is defended due to this. So if I take king e7, rook takes d6, takes, and then I give a check. King goes back here. I can check on d7. Ooh, that starts to look pretty precarious for black. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to put that king on e7. What other options do I have? Probably just rook takes d4. I think that's going to be the move here because my knight is attacked twice. And rook takes d4 does pin black. So take king e7. I feel like I'm definitely in a position to do this. Take rook d1 check. And if king e7, rook d7, just looks like trouble all around for him. I mean, maybe he could try to survive that with his open king, but... Certainly a fun position to play for me. Knight g4 is another option, but let's go ahead and play this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Keep this initiative going. Now, after king takes here, there's some checks too, but I don't think uh, black should do that. I have rook d2 if black checks. So after king takes here, Getting the rook involved seems to make the most sense, but I'm also just looking briefly at queen d3. I think I should get the rook in the game. Yeah, let's play check. And if the king goes to the c file, I think it's going to be mate soon, because I can play queen c4 followed by knight d7. So king e7 seems forced here. And I'm going to play rook d7. And black will have to make a tough decision between king e8 and king f8 there. Yep, let's go ahead and check. So if king f8, I probably won't play rook takes f7, even though that wins the queen for, uh, wins a queen and a pawn rather for a rook and a knight. I want to keep the pressure. I don't want to simplify quite yet. I'm thinking more like rook takes b7, more along those lines. Place king e8. Yeah, here too, I think rook takes b7 could be good. Looking for queen b5, queen b5 followed by knight d7 before I cash in on f7. Yeah, again, just seeing if those checks bother me. I don't think they do. Let's take. So material-wise, I'm only down one point of material. Importantly, black cannot castle here. Black's already moved that king several times, so <laughs> no castle short. For black in this position or castles long for that matter and the threat is queen b5 king f8 knight d7 check yep 
Yeah, I could have also played queen b5 on the last move, but I think it's nice to free up that d7 square immediately. So king f8 is always met by that. So very tough spot for black. He gives a check. Let's sidestep, put black on the clock again. Mm, okay, rook d8. Rook d8 is playable here, because then if I play queen b5, uh, king f8, rook takes f7, queen takes f7, knight takes f7, I do get back ranked. So probably if rook d8, I need to play some sort of move to just get rid of the back rank issues first before playing a check or... Uh, maybe knight takes f7 is good there too. I should consider that as well. Okay, so he plays a6. I think that's definitely trying to address the queen b5 issue. So could take f7. Scanning for other options here. Could play something like g3, just see where that queen goes. Uh, could play a luft move once again. Kind of leaning towards a luft move here. Something like a3. Seems weird to play that in the midst of an attack, but I think it's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, a4, maybe similar. Yeah, let's actually go for a4. Don't think black wants to take here because a knight takes f7. So I'm going to try to hold off on knight takes f7 or rook takes f7 for the time being. I have a 3 to 1 majority here, so if... I do take on f7 and we get some sort of queen versus two rook scenario. It'd be really nice if I could win this a pawn and have my a pawn already advancing and no back rank issue to worry about. So a bit of a lull in the attack. Okay, and he does take. But yeah, it really feels like that's going to run into this move. Maybe queen c6 is his idea here. Hmm. Yeah, he could play queen c6, but I'm going to take. Queen c6 is kind of funny because he's not even threatening to take that yet, but I don't know if I want to take here. I'll probably play queen h5 against queen h6, actually. Uh, queen c6, rather. Yeah, this looks strong. If he takes there, he runs into knight d6, but I don't want to take h8 yet because then he could take on b7. Uh, maybe I had queen takes e6 at that point, but this move looks pretty murderous. Hmm, maybe he can play king f8? Hmm. It's a crazy position. Knight d8. Uh-huh. Opening up this. And defending my rook. He has queen e8. To keep this crazy position afloat. Okay, I'm going to give a check here. And then I'm going to play knight c6, I think. Back and try to go knight e7. I don't have much time left, though. There is a little bit of an increment. Narashamit putting up great defense here. Finding some only moves. This is a fun game. Yeah, still a very tough position for black, I think. Okay, checking should just win now. Check, king here, and then check from either e4 or d3. Yeah, give a check here. It's g6, queen takes g6, or queen f5, knight takes f5. Okay, thank you for the game, Narashamit. Tell them thanks for the game. Yeah, so that was a very tough position for Black, but he defended admirably. He wants to be my friend on chess.com, so definitely taking that. I don't think I executed that attack so well. Yeah, looking back on it, maybe Castle's queenside was just not the greatest move. I mean, actually, kind of second-guessing my play in this entire uh, area of the game right here. Moves 12 through 14, I'd say. So queen e2, knight e5, Castle's. I probably should play queen b5 here. It's kind of weird. I think my original intention was queen b5 when I was thinking about it. And then for some reason, when this position came up, I decided that castles was better. I mean, castles is a very aesthetically pleasing 
move. I get to connect my rooks, I create an immediate threat, I can get the king out, but I wonder if I shouldn't just play queen b5 here. Attacks this and threatens mate. There's this move to consider, I guess. Bishop b4, I'm not sure I looked at that at the time, although actually I can just play here, can't I? He doesn't have time to take because he's getting mated. So I would bet that queen b5 was better because I could, I could just do this and then castle and rook takes d4 is on the way. This should be crushing. So, yeah, I think, um, and even 95, to be honest, like 95 king d6 is possible. And I was mentioning I could play the move f4 here, and I just thought this would be very awkward for black. But it's probably not fatal. You know, takes, I was thinking about check and then rook f1. But black may be able to keep this afloat somehow. I am down a couple pawns now, actually. So king e7, rook f1, king e7, just so this pawn's defended after the queen moves. So I'll look at that with the engine. I think my attack might have got out a little bit out of control. And then certainly later, it was really sharp. You know, I went ahead and did this and then check. This feels good for me, but hey, black came up with some good defenses here. Yeah, a4, queen takes a4. I really thought that this would just lose after knight takes f7, but this produced an interesting position where... It's a bit of a standoff like I would like to take the rook here but that allows queen here although I think I should have seen that in this position I can take and that should win shouldn't it because yeah if king f8 there's knight g6 mate if king d8 I feel like there's yeah there's probably knight f7 king c7 queen d6 king c8 queen d8 yep and if queen e7 there is queen g8 and go pick up the rook should be decisive I don't think black's going to have a perpetual there. Well, maybe. <laughs> never say never, right? Like, check here, check. Can I escape this? Start running my king out? Some things to consider there for sure. But I didn't have a lot of time left, so I went for queen h5, which I think should also be good. But even here, I had to come up with some uh, seriously strange ways to keep the attack going because I was down on the clock at this point. Yeah, again, I want to I wanna at some point take this rook, but my rook is always hanging, and I don't have a good square along the 7th rank to put my rook that is safe. So knight d8 seemed like a, a good idea at the time. Attack the queen. Yeah, and now I checked. Maybe there's some better way to play this, but I just didn't see it at the time. So very entertaining game. Uh, I think for, for black, like I said, I think... Black's sense of danger, their guard just has to be up here because when you're playing c5 that early, you're exposing yourself to a check here. So I can play that check at any moment. And when I play bishop takes f6, it should cue black into looking at that, I think, for sure. Because um definitely like the way the game turned out for me after this. But probably could have played it better, like I was saying. We'll take a look at that. Okay, so let's click over to the analysis board see what we can discern here yeah so this is the rubenstein french black playing knight d7 with an eye towards playing knight gf6 knight c3 good way to meet the french knight d2 is the terash as i was saying uh, so if you want kind of an in-between option where you're not taking or pushing those are the the two best moves for white two best tries in my mind one of the main differences between knight c3 and knight d2 is that knight c3 is uh often met by bishop b4. This is the winnower variation, where black pins this knight. Whereas against knight d2, bishop b4 doesn't really make sense because white can play c3 and block the bishop. So, But knight c3, you do have to be ready for bishop b4, among other lines. So there's quite a bit of theory. Knight f6 is another main move here. But black played this Rubenstein variation. One line I played here from time to time is white a long time ago was g3 g3 knight f6 take and then put the bishop on g2 and just try to claim some small edge based on based on the activity of this this bishop on the long diagonal but yeah decided to play it a bit more mainline and let's take a look at the explorer right around here bishop g5 just pinning so you can see we're following quite a few games hundreds and hundreds of games h6 bishop h4 yep c5 and so now I went and played bishop takes f6. So actually, that move is not very popular. Uh, white seems to score pretty well, but only played in 14 games. Yeah, and in, in every game, black played g takes f6. So I'm not an expert in this variation. So 
I was not following theory, my book theory that is at this point. So bishop b5 check immediately is played more often here than take, queen takes, yep. Can't take with the knight because it's pinned. Queen e2, okay, so this is somewhat similar to the game. White perhaps looking to castle queenside and use this alignment favorably. But yeah, bishop takes f6, it does look like g takes f6 should be played, producing an interesting pawn structure. And white can give a check now, bishop d7, maybe check again, still following many games. Looks like we actually transpose back into some games. But if any of you guys have experience in this variation, write in the comments. So, okay, instead though, my opponent played queen takes f6, and let's load up the engine. Fire up the fans, right? <laughs> Hopefully they're not too loud this time around. Yeah, engine definitely likes g takes f6. So black took with a queen instead, and that immediately jumps the eval greatly in my favor. So check, bishop d7, yep, take, take. So I'm very curious what the computer thinks I should do here. Yeah, because d takes c5 was such an obvious looking move, but I kind of like the way that I played it, at least with queen e2. Maybe the follow-up knight e5 castles queenside isn't so best. So the engine wants to take the pawn, king c7, and then play queen e2, it looks like. Okay, just allowing bishop takes c5, but maybe going for a pin at that point. Yeah, bishop takes c5, queen c4. And if black were to support it, then they'll have to watch out for b4 in the future. Although b4 right now doesn't work because a queen takes a one check. Surprise, surprise. So, okay, so this is a line, I guess, just kind of arguing, as I alluded to in the game, that black may just be experiencing some long-term discomfort with that king moving uh, all about the board when it would really prefer to be tucked away on g8, castled short, or maybe castled long somehow. Okay. The other move I was debating here was knight e5 check. That just seems to kind of push black's king over here to c7. Yeah, computer doesn't like that so much. And I'm going to guess that it's it's similar when I play knight e5 check on the next move. So queen e2, black took on d4, which I thought was kind of daring. Thought maybe they would move their king right away or, yeah, maybe move the rook, try to castle by hand. But black took. Okay. Yeah, knight e5 check. Hmm. Not in the top three moves. Castles immediately... That's what the engine prefers. Why did I not like castles immediately here? I thought I saw something in this position. Hmm, not sure. But yeah, one of these positions where I have a number of tempting moves, but probably just didn't play the best one. Yeah, and strangely enough, or maybe not strangely enough, it makes a lot of sense, is king d6 being the best move. Going up boldly with the king, in true Bond Cloud style, right, guys? And attacking the knight on e5 a couple times. Yeah, and I think I probably would have played that f4 move rather than move my knight here. Yeah, I think knight e5 was just a weak move. Should have castled. Or queen b5, but probably castles. I like the look of castles. Preserve knight e5. Threaten rook takes d4. Keep queen b5 or maybe queen c4 check open if black goes here. So, knight e5, king d8. Now, here I definitely think I should have played queen b5. Yeah, queen b5 was plus 5.62 in this position versus what I played. Five, five point difference here by castling queenside. Looked like such a natural move. But actually, after bishop d6 or, yeah, maybe even bishop c5 in this position, it's not completely clear. This computer's still showing an edge for white, for sure. Potentially a large edge, but... Hard to argue with queen b5, threatening mate. I really have little explanation as to why I didn't play this move. It's weird, because like I said, I even saw this move, but I don't know if I had mentioned it. It was one of my original intentions had black played here, but just didn't do it. But yeah, this queen, b, queen d7 issue, so tough to meet for black without their king going on the run significantly again, like king c8, king c7, which looked to be winning. Yep, yeah, and again, bishop b4, I can just calmly play c3, I think. Attack that bishop, keep this threat open. 
Queen always defending the knight on e5. So after castles, now things got really interesting because bishop d6 and I started sacrificing stuff. And the computer thinks bishop c5 is even stronger looking to defend this. Wow, and then it suggests b4 deflection type idea. Yeah, because here, key point, key difference. Always good to compare similar tactical lines when you're calculating. If queen b5 trying to threaten mate again and threaten the bishop, black can respond with queen takes e5 because of the bishop there. Then I'm not uh, defending the knight on e5. So bishop d6 was played instead. I took a yeah, king e7, take, take. So this seems to be good. Check. And as I was saying, if black ever flees this way, they're going to run into immediate problems. Queen check. I mean, one example of a mate that could occur here is this. So black's not going to survive very long with this and stuff like the rook coming into d6 or again knight d7. Mating a couple here. So king e7, forced. Yep, rook d7. And now it looks like both lines are good for white. King e8. Now I played rook takes b7. The computer thinks that queen b5 immediately is even stronger. Also doesn't mind rook takes f7. Yeah, rook takes b7 is the third move given here. So it likes this one a lot, huh? Threatening various discoveries. Yeah, that makes sense. I thought black might flee here, king, king f8, although then the engine points this out, just being very strong. So this is... This is the type of position where an engine is just, it's gonna reveal so much. Is it's tactical, it's completely open, super sharp position, we'd say. So the engine is not gonna miss hardly anything here. Whereas a human, especially in time pressure, mutual time pressure, we're capable of missing a lot. Okay, yeah, queen b8, I think especially coupled with this idea, along with the discovered check ideas, looks pretty decisive. But I thought this was good too, looking for that. But check here, queen g5 also possible, and then a6. So kudos to black for understanding that I wanted to check here potentially. And this is still apparently just totally winning for white, which makes sense. I mean, especially given, given black's lack of coordination between the rooks, it's not surprising to me that this is winning for white. Materials equal if we count it up. I have six pawns, or sorry, I think... Black is actually up one point of material. I should be precise. I have one pawn for the exchange. Yeah, a4. Could also play a3, but a4. I didn't really think queen takes a4 was working for black. Uh, I think my biggest problem now is that I was down on the clock. So I played knight takes f7. The engine gives queen f3 as being strong here as well. Looking at that and also some potential discovery ideas against this rook here. But I think knight takes f7 is understandable. And yep, queen c6, probably the only move to keep black in the game. Because otherwise, if this rook moves, black's going to run smack dab into queen takes e6. So yeah, queen here. And even though I was, I am plus 8, plus 9, according to the engine, with your clock ticking and realizing knight takes h8 runs into queen takes b7, you know, I was... Not panicking, but I was nervous at this point for sure. But yeah, I think I think this would have been a pretty clean variation, taking and taking here. With the knight either coming to f7 or g6, if black runs with the king. So it was describing this as mate. This runs into a mate as well. And finally, uh, queen e7 running into... Oh, I guess I can also check here and go pick up the rook. I was thinking queen g8, but this is even cleaner because I'm going to be able to take the rook with check. So that is completely winning too. But with little time, I played queen h5. Again, because of this being possible. Double check with the fork if black takes the rook. <clears throat> black played king f8. Yeah, and I went knight d8, threatening the queen and threatening mate here. Uh huh. And now the engine finds forced mate, queen e5 or queen g4. What did I play? Queen f3, check. Queen f3 check, and then I think I played knight c6. Also pretty good, but you know, black still is capable of surviving here, at least for the short term. 
And black played queen f8, and that move seems to be fatal after knight e7. But had they played king h7, I still have work to do here. King h7, with the idea that if I check now, black can play queen g6, and the game continues. So probably better for me to, yeah, play a centralizing move like that, looking for a check there. And very awkward for black, plus three and a half, four territory for white, but again, the game continues. So, um, I think I, I could have improved my attack for sure. As far as Nesharamat, they played well in, in defense. I mean, they had to make some pretty awkward defensive moves at times and find some hard to find defensive resources, especially after all this happened, you know, finding queen f4, a6, especially queen c6 to keep the game afloat. Some good resources there. I guess some improvements to be had, like bishop c5, although this position's pretty volatile. But yeah, I'd say the main thing is just trying to avoid these positions in the first place. And uh, I think when I play bishop takes f6, especially after having played bishop h4 beforehand, that should kind of trigger to black, like, hey, this is kind of unusual. White's making two bishop moves, capturing on f6 on the second go. What is white trying to gain from that? Like, what is your opponent trying to achieve by, by playing a move like that? Otherwise, we were following theory, which perhaps they knew. They seemed like it. Uh, but yeah, sharp game. Hard to extract too many, you know, just platitudes from a game like this or just kind of general things that will be helpful because the sharper the game, the more it is about the moves concretely that are happen happening on the board. But once again, I think I could have executed this attack better. So not my best effort, but got the victory in the end and it was a fun game. So hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll be back again soon with another video.